So in this subsection, we're going to look at our second example of a counting process, which remember is a process where the only transitions are to increase by one, but we need to know what the time is between those increases. So for the normal Poisson process, we have this parameter called the rate, lambda. And that rate was the same all the time, as in we'd expect to get uh, phone calls to our call centre at the same rate, or we'd expect to get claims to our insurance company at the same rate. However, in real life, we might expect that at some times the rate will be slower and that sometimes the rate will be quicker. So we might want to look at a rate that changes over time. So lambda is no longer constant, but is lambda of t, some kind of function of the time t. So, for example, our call centre doesn't have many calls in the morning, but has lots in the afternoon, for example. So this is called a time inhomogeneous Poisson process. Time inhomogeneous, because the rate isn't the same all the time. Uh, this will be pretty much the only time inhomogeneous case we consider in this course. So let's start with a definition of what the time inhomogeneous Poisson process is. OK, so here's the definition of a time inhomogeneous Poisson process. And you'll see that this definition is almost exactly the same as the definition for just the normal Poisson process. So let's look at where it's different. The first thing is that we have this rate function, lambda of t. So now we don't just have a rate constant, lambda, we have a rate function, lambda over t, that can change over time. And if we look at the three numbered points in the definition, number one, that we start from zero, is just the same as before. Number three, that we have independent increments when those increments are not overlapping. That's the same as we had before. But it's this second one that's a bit different because here we have that the increment is still Poisson distributed. But to get the parameter of that Poisson distribution, we have to integrate the rate over time. In particular, we integrate it over the interval that we're interested in which is the interval from t to t plus s. So it's from t to t plus s that we integrate the rate function to get uh, the, this, uh, the parameter for the Poisson distribution. It's worth saying that if the rate function lambda of t is actually constant, then what do we get back for this integral? It's the integral between t and t plus s of just lambda a constant du, which is just lambda times the length. And so that gets us back our old definition of the Poisson process, right? Because the definition of the Poisson process was that the increments were Poisson with parameter lambda times s. So if lambda is a constant, we get back our old Poisson process. But more generally, for some rate function lambda of t, uh, we get this time inhomogeneous process. This will all become a lot easier to understand, I think, if we look at an example. So here's an example, example 16.2. A call centre notes that when it opens its phone lines in the morning, phone calls arise slowly at first, but gradually become more common over the first hour. The owners of the centre model this as a time inhomogeneous Poisson process with this rate function. Uh, it might be worth just sketching a little picture of this rate function to give you an idea. Uh, so what it's saying is that over the first hour, it goes from 0 up to 20, and then it carries on at 20. So that's how they're choosing to model the fact that calls are slow for the first hour, but they gradually speed up until they get to the 20 calls per hour, uh, which is kind of the long-term number of calls per hour they get. And the question asks, what is the probability that they receive no calls in the first 10 minutes? Well, the number of calls in the first 10 minutes uh, is, is Poisson, right? Uh, well, 10 minutes is one sixth of an hour, isn't it? So x of a sixth is Poisson, uh, the integral from 0 to a sixth of lambda of t dt. Uh, so the integral from 0 to a sixth, the sixth of an hour is 10 minutes. Uh, between 0 and a sixth, we're in this first case here, aren't we, where the lambda of t equals 20t dt. Uh, if you integrate 20t, uh, the t becomes t squared, divided through by the 2, 
you get 10 t squared between 0 and a 6. So that's 10 over 36. Uh, I typed that into my calculator earlier. And apparently that's 0 0.278. So the number of phone calls in the first 10 minutes is Poisson with parameter 0 0.278. Okay. But the question didn't ask for the parameter of the Poisson distribution. It asked for the probability there are no calls. So the probability that x of 1 sixth equals 0 equals, well, you might have learnt by now that the probability of Poisson distribution is 0 is just e to the minus its parameter. But if you did want to write it out fully, that's 0 0.278 to the 0 over 0 factorial, which is e to the... 0 point, minus 0 0.278, and I also typed that into my calculator earlier. And apparently it's 0 0.757, so there's about three quarters chance that the call centre receives no calls in the first 10 minutes. Okay, that was a good warm-up. Let's, let's try one more example while we're here. Uh, what is the expected number of calls in the first two hours well again the number of calls in the first two hours is x of 2 and that's Poisson with parameter the integral from 0 to 2 of lambda of t dt so we just need to do that integral the integral from 0 to 2 of lambda of t dt equals, ah, well, the, our definition of lambda up here, it had different behaviour of depending on whether t is less than 1 or whether t is greater than 1. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to deal with those separately by splitting the integral into a between 0 and 1 bit, where it's 20t dt, and a between 1 and 2 bit, where it's just 20 dt, because it's 20t between 0 and 1, and 20 for bigger than 1. So our integral is 20t between 0 and 1, and just 20 between 1 and 2. Uh, again, we need to do that integration. 20t, we said before, became 10t squared between 0 and 1. 20 just becomes 20t between 1 and 2. Uh, so the 10t squared, uh, 1 squared is 1, so that gives us 10. This gives us uh, 20 times 2 is 40, 20 times 1 is 20. That's 10 plus 20 equals 30. So x2 is distributed as a Poisson distribution with rate 30, but the expected value of the Poisson distribution is just its parameter. So that's 30 as well. So expected number of calls in the first two hours is 30. I guess we should just mention here, as a last thing, we could do uh, time in homogeneous Poisson processes and look at all their infinitesimal definitions. I don't intend to go through that in detail, but maybe we should just note that uh, the probability that in a small time, little tau, we jump up j places is, as always, it's very unlikely we'll move up more than one. Uh, there's a small chance that we'll move up 1, and it's lambda times tau up to small lower order terms. Uh, and otherwise we stay where we are, so that's 1 minus lambda t tau plus lower order terms, j equals 0. So note again that this is exactly the same as the Poisson process, except lambda has become lambda of t here and here. So in the counting process... Lambda could depend on n, the current number of people there are, number of individuals or number of arrivals there are. Whereas in a time inhomogeneous Poisson process, it can't depend on n, but it can depend on t. So those are the differences. In the time inhomogeneous Poisson process, the rate changes over time. With a counting process, the rate changes depending on how many arrivals you've had.